Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you what I'm making. It's going to be something for the uh, cab to hold my um, monitors and stuff and sat nav. It's very, very crude at the moment. Very basic looking, you know. Do holes and some plywood and. Um, holes for switches and holes for the sat nav which is this one and the reversing monitor which is this big one but probably be used for watching DVDs and stuff as well so um, I've had to put it all together with uh, screws and um, little wedges purely because the um, The actual screens themselves are quite thick, yeah. So I've had to make recesses for them so that they'll sit in a nice position once they're in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just carry on plodding along. I was thinking of maybe making these, making more of these. You know, I've got um, ten plates. So I can cut this the same shape. It's been really, really difficult because every angle of the dashboard is irregular angle to each other. So every single, like this is the front side here. Uh, this is the front side here. And if you can see here, it's angled down because that's the way that the dashboard angles down. So you can imagine you know it's been quite difficult to get these cuts so I've made 10 plates so I can get the exact same cuts next time this is what it looks like now starting to take shape looks a bit odd and bent and that but believe me it fits in the dashboard so it's got this um, like high density foam kind of plasticky foam kind of stuff right. and it's easy to cut as well obviously I had to bend it so that it does the contours and, uh, and inside there is all the electrics centre console piece just wanted to get a video of it before I decide what to do with it now the thing with this is I made it thinking oh yeah it's going to be really cool and everything and yeah it is but basically I can't really use it because the um, the position of it is obscuring my view so this is my eye view and then you can imagine when I try to park the vehicle I can't really see what's right down in my front area so um, I'm going to have to redo it and I think you maybe put these switches in here so I have them all here and uh, the sat nav will probably end up I don't know, up here or down there or somewhere like this and this screen I'm not sure maybe I can get it to mount here somewhere on its um, mounting bracket or behind right down in the window area here behind there because this is too big and to be honest my finishing skills of um, upholstery are not good so it's all actually coming to pieces with the glue that I used to glue it in it's all coming to pieces I mean that in, that in itself I could probably have fixed but <coughs> the uh, the functionality is um, it's just not going to happen. I'll probably get into trouble when it comes to things like MOTs and maybe if the police ever pull me over they'd probably moan. But to be fair to myself I did make it so that all the connections, if I can just release it. I made sure it was stuck down very well with Velcro. Okay. 
to be fair, I'm, I did make all the connections there. Able to come off and do everything, and I labelled, I labelled all the, uh, I labelled everything, you know, this, uh, like for example, this here is for my right side lights. That's number three, and it comes to switch number three, you know. So I know what all the wires are. Huge job getting all these wires in, feeding them in, and drilling new holes for them to get in. And I've got my power, my negative and my ground lead all there. But to be honest, I'm going to just take it all to pieces now and feed it underneath, underneath this uh, dashboard. And bring the wires, have, have them mounted on some kind of wooden um, thing where my fuses and stuff will be so um, and then just wire the switches to come out of here which will probably look quite cool as well switches coming out of here um, and like I said the, the sat nav itself that's only small so that's that won't be a problem and the um, the main screen this is going to be the one that I'm going to have difficulty working out where to mount this is a bit of a shame but I mean if it was just purely for the sake of like MOT and police and stuff, then I could just leave it there and take it out when they uh, when they moan. But I really can't see properly. This is this is me. Yeah, I can't actually see properly to park it, you know, without really craning over it. So that's why I, I'm going to have to put this idea to rest and. Do it a different way. Okay, so after uh, having realised that my dash mounted thing wasn't going to be very good after all, I've decided to have these switches that I wanted, um, these ones, uh, and try and get them to come out of um, this area here on the uh, centre console. Yeah, so I had to take off the um, or whatever it is, the cover, and take this out and see what I can do with this regarding having um, the switches coming out of the center of these. Yeah, so I've taken this out, and uh, this is what I've got on the back selection of um, these clips, and then you just squeeze, squeeze them like that, and then they just pop out. And then what you're left with is, uh, is this fair. But of course, what that means is um, the actual switch itself will not fit. So I'm just going to get this, these wires off it. Hang on. Just so I can show you. Okay, so basically you're left with this. And of course the, uh, the switch itself has to go in there somehow and sit in the middle so that it can come through the other side yeah so uh, but obviously it's got to be done at an angle because they don't sit like this in there they sit like this so it has to be done at an angle uh, so what that means is uh, I've had to cut I've had to cut this now, so um, this now, with a, a Dremel tool, of course, I've had to cut this down to size, I don't know if you can see, but I've had to shave off e each of the legs, if you want to call them legs, I've had to shave them down to size, so that the uh, switch itself can fit in between them, and uh, I've checked and it does, although Trying to do it with one hand is very difficult. Um, okay, so yes, there you go. So it does fit in between them now, yeah. So that's what I'm now going to have to do to all of the ones that I want the switches in. And of course, I have to cut the actual the housing as well, yeah. As you can see on the middle one, 
I've had to cut the housing there just to allow the switch to pass through because obviously it's, um, it's raised quite a bit. It's like a big area that is raised so the switch won't go all the way through unless I cut that. So now, you know, and we're talking like relatively precise cutting here, you know, not like, oh yeah, I'll just cut anyway and just hope for the best. So it has to be quite precise. So I'm going to now carry on cutting this and uh, <coughs> hope that this uh, will work. It should do, in theory it will work, although I have noticed that the uh, even when this is in, the switches are slightly, slightly wonky. But there's a way that I'm going to correct that and it involves cutting more of this off and then when I put this back in Basically, I don't know how detailed you can see this, but basically you see this area here and the opposite area here has like a little lip on it. I, I've got to cut this lip away now and um, put a little dab of uh, resin, fiberglass resin there when, once that's been cut to hold it into position because realistically you know okay yeah these move these move a little bit yeah well i don't need them to move at all yeah there's no need for it so uh it doesn't matter if i use uh, resin there because it'll fix it fast in place um so it won't move and the the thing won't pop out you know especially as i'm when i'm actually flipping the switch you know it's no danger of it popping out yeah so uh, hopefully next next time it will be all the switches are in and uh, you have to test it this is the uh, switchboard if you like I'm almost completely finished the switch is there now um, and on the back, just to hold them in, I've put a load of messy old fiberglass resin. Um, what's it, this stuff? Isopon P40. It's just to give it a little bit of um, resistance, because after all that cutting, uh, the uh, these things were a little bit loose, you know? These things were a little bit loose sitting in the housings, so... Um, I thought I'd build them up a little bit. <clears throat> build them up a little bit with some resin. And uh, that one is a clean. So uh, next time you see these, these will be in the dashboard working. Here we have reached the stage of the uh, the side lights, the marker lights for the uh, for the top for the roof of the van. Um, I'm going to have three of these marker lights. One like so, one like so, and then one like so. Now basically they're very, I don't know if you can see, they're, uh, well it's very easy to, to install. It's just literally one drill hole and then this thing slides in. But the, uh, the rim on it is very, very small. Um, I don't think you can get a good shot of it with this uh, camera, but basically it's very, very small. So I was thinking, like, well, what the hell? How am I going to make sure that it stays in there? Um, so what I did was I was thinking I could use one of these. It's a uh, little rubber grommet, and basically um, the little side light slides right inside that and then six flush with the metal work of the van. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop one in, hopefully, just to see how it goes in. Here's my little pre-drilled hole with the uh, grommet already in there. I'm just going to feed these wires through now. It's always a bit nerve-wracking when you're drilling holes into your into your van, you know. Just 
just in case you get it wrong. Okay, so that's like so, and then I just kind of tease it in a bit, you know. Get it in there. Come on, that's it. It's going in there, good. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Very good. Okay, so that's in there now, that is it. So what will happen is, on the other side, I've got a little nut that I'll be doing up. Making sure it's really nice and tight so that um, the uh, rubber grommet <coughs> acts like a water seal to stop any uh, water, rainwater, from getting in. You know, all the rest of it. And then it's just a matter of um, wiring them all up. So I'm just going to continue doing that around the van and then wire them all up. And then the next video you'll see these side lights, uh, marker lights on. And also the uh, front, uh, the front daytime running lights, but I'm going to use them at night as well. Uh, these babies, you'll see them on as well. And also you'll see the um, dashboard, uh, the new, <laughs> the new um, dashboard affair thingy that I've uh, rigged up in there as well so uh, that's coming next final stages of uh, hooking these um, marker lights up they're up there now and uh, I've squirted a generous amount of silicon and adhesive yeah this stuff is, is good you know a lot better than Ordinary silicon, as I found out, ordinary silicon is crap because I had to take the whole lot of what I did with the ordinary silicon off and replace it with this. And this stuff is like awesome, super sticky, but very, very good water repellent. Um, just gonna see if I can get a good shot of one that I've basically where the uh where the electrics meet the shell of the uh, fan, if you like. I've squirted a load of um, this stuff around there and given it a smear with my finger just to make a waterproof or watertight barrier so that no um, water gets into the, uh, into the actual wires and the electrics and all that. And I've also done it on the outside uh, you probably won't be able to see it very clearly, but I, I've done it on the outside um, so that the water will just roll off it, you know, when it rains instead of going into it. Okay, so, right, here we go. I'll show you my interior electrics. Okay, over here is some wires leading up to uh, the, uh, the top mounted brake and indicators that are on the top. This dangly wire here that's falling down for the minute, this is going to be for my rear view camera, which is going to sit on the top as well. These wires are going to go up and out through the roof and hook up to the camera up there. Um, I've also got another one here ready for when it's all coiled up there so it reaches quite far over here. Uh, this one is for uh, another rear view camera, but this one's going to be for the parking uh, aspect of rear view, yeah. So this one's going to be down where the um, the step will be when I put that on outside the vehicle, so I can see to park. It's an absolute nightmare in a vehicle this size. Okay, so I've run various wires. Uh, the uh, greeny and blue wire lead down to my uh, reversing light because underneath the van there is a reversing um, noise maker if you like you know beep 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 so I've got one of those on there and that's as I say running through the length of the van coming down meeting with other wires which I'll show you in a minute coming down to the corner there and that's, that's where they will go into the uh, into the cab area and then I've run them all underneath the flooring and up through the dash to uh, my new <coughs> my new console. Um, 
okay so here what we've got here is the uh, the lighting the, wire, the wiring for the lighting uh, of the uh, front LEDs it's quite simple always a bit scary drilling holes in the van um, roof you know so uh, but hey it's done now there's no going back and they look okay so uh, you know at the moment this looks untidy because I haven't sorted it out properly yet because I've obviously got to wire wire these in you know three times long yeah and then they're gonna run all the way to these that have been pre I'm gonna say these that have been pre-selected and that one says RSL for right side lights and uh, LSL for left side lights yeah so they're ready uh, the batteries up there just to test the uh, LEDs because I wasn't sure if these ones were working but it turned out to be a fuse of blown which is cool um, <clears throat> and that's that's about it for the minute and the next one will definitely be with the lights working just shows it all working marker lights The um, daytime running light and the new marker lights that I put on, and finally the rear hazards and brake lights, stop lights. Okay, so that's that. In the cab we have, turn those hazards off, we have the illuminated lights. This one comes on when the uh, reverse gear is engaged as it completes the circuit. This is a uh, spare, so that one goes off. And these are the uh, side lights and the front lights. There we go. 